All right. Happy New Year. And I know it's the new year, not only because this is the time of year where we only have like 45 minutes of daylight each day, um, but looking at the email inbox, man, there's something out there right now. Everybody is looking for just a fresh start or how to simplify. And I've gotten several requests specifically on how to use some of the new features in Google Sheets to do project management. Then I've done a number of videos on kind of isolated pieces of this, but what I thought I would do this time is actually just share with you how I do project tracking in Google Sheets and uh, give you some ideas and making a copy and a template of these in a folder. I'm going to link down below where if you just want something to get some ideas um, or to even copy and use, feel free. So uh, I hope it's useful. So we'll just dive right into it. So very lightweight, no frills, Google Sheet here. And I've set it up very specifically. So on the left hand side, I've used the at symbol to use the drop downs and I've listed out just 10 different projects. And the reason that I use the drop down for that is oftentimes as we get into stuff, we end up having phases or different elements of projects that we want to maybe track separately. And so I just use this as a way of getting everything in a sheet, select the project, and then kind of treating those independently so we can filter, but more importantly, so we can pull into uh, the new sheets timeline. So there's the project, the drop down there, action officer, same thing, at whoever name is the owner of this project, whether it's me, somebody else. Um, urgency, I use a mix, uh, kind of a, a modified version of the Eisenhower matrix, if you're familiar with that, where highest priority is both urgent and important. Then we have um, urgent, not important. Then we have not urgent, but important. And then not urgent, not important. It's just a really good way for me to be able to prioritize. Obviously, you could change that to however you want to do uh, urgency status. Um, so yeah, well, status. So status, same thing. Drop down here. And I've got staging, which is stuff you know, not yet started, ready to ready to start working on. We've got stuff that's in progress and flight. We've got waiting on hold if we're waiting for uh, information um, or something big to start moving forward, completed and then abandoned. Uh, I have a category for that just to be able to track stuff that we start and doesn't always finish. Um, and then in resources, again, start with the at symbol, start typing the document title. In this case, I did include uh, just the project template. So we use the Google Sheet as kind of a landing or a, a hub for all of project tracking. And then as we want to go deeper, we use Google Docs. So if I click on this, it links over to a Google Doc template. We loaded this template into our domains uh, templates, so you can use that that to be able to just get your arms around something that uh, you're working on. And it's very simple, breaks down into issue, team, meetings, resources, current state, future state, the actual plan, uh, and then actions. So actions here, same thing with the new smart chips being able to assign as tasks. So I keep each of the project documents separate instead of like in one big one, mainly because there's so many different teams that we work with. And I want to be able to share this document as a touch point for each of those different project teams. And then we use the actions and the checklist here to be able to assign tasks uh, to team members. And the really cool thing about that is if you're using the checklist and you make the assignment as a task, and I'll just do a uh, uh, Brennan, there we are, um, and we'll make this tomorrow. Um, as we do that, it actually loads up into Google Tasks so that we actually have uh, tracking both in our calendar as well as in Gmail on the sidebar, when you're in Drive on the sidebar with Google Tasks. Uh, but anyway, that just keeps it all in one big neat um, kind of package. Uh, so next over, we've got a drop down. I think we've got like 20 plus different departments in, in our government. I'm sure yours is the same. So we have a drop down here that just lists all the departments. And if I didn't click on that, then moving over, we've got start date, due date, uh, those are really key for the next thing I'm going to show you. Notes. Notes we just use as kind of a, a quick one sentence summary of where it is. What that allows us to do is be able to go into any meeting with any department, leadership, whatever, and we can filter right down to answer specific questions about projects we have going on with those departments. Um, the last column you'll see there is value. 
Value here, it means something a little unique uh, for us. We, we are looking always to get the most out of Google Workspace and not spend any more money. So here we actually track cost savings or cost avoidance, the, the in-kind cost of what we would have purchased if we weren't able to do something within Google Workspace. Um, there, if you're curious about that and you want some really good guidelines, you can actually go and look at the National Association of State Procurement Officers, NASPO, and they actually have some really great guidelines uh, that they've published uh, around what constitutes cost saving and cost avoidance. But largely, we just look for in-kind services that we what we would have paid if we weren't able to solve it with stuff inside. So we do track that um, in these sheets. And then since we've set it all up with these project urgency status resources, stuff like that, makes it really easy to flip over to the new timeline feature. So in the timeline feature, and I'm gonna move myself over here. Um, in the timeline feature, you'll see it's like a Gantt chart, right? So we've got it broken out by department, and then we've got two projects assigned to each department, and this is spread across uh, just a, a date range. Obviously, you can change your date range, years, multi-year, days, weeks, uh, whatever you wanna actually view it as. And then if you go into the settings, because we were intentional about the way in which we set up those columns, um, we determine what the start date is, what to use for due date, what to use for the project title, and then the optional fields. So we actually do the color status um, by the status column. So we can look really closely and find out these are closed, that one's abandoned, these are in progress, these are uh, waiting for information. Um, card detail, what shows up right here just as a summary, we use that from the notes column, and then we group the cards by the organization. So we actually have it grouped by department. Uh, and then we identify the action officer uh, when that's in there. So you've got a really, you know, simple way. Um, I will also say that uh, we do freeze the project column, mainly so that when you're scrolling across the project title, I mean, that the project uh, stays over there. But part of the reason we also freeze that column is it makes it much easier on a mobile device. I don't know how often you've tried to use spreadsheets on a mobile device, but man, that, that can be that can be a challenge, um, especially when it's snowy outside and you're wearing mittens or gloves. Um, but Anyway, we use that because if you freeze that project column, you can actually fly through it pretty quick on the mobile. And if you use those drop downs, it makes it really simple, even on a mobile device uh, where sheets can kind of be awkward. It makes it really easy to kind of uh, scroll down and actually change status or add an update or something like that. Um, so I will put a link to a folder that has the copy of the spreadsheet, the copy of the project template. And again, feel free to copy, you can laugh at it, use it, get ideas from it. Um, I just hope that you are able to tackle your projects this year in a more simplified manner. So good luck. All right.